this season on Haunted Collector. My daughters have heard voices. I've had five horse deaths. Please help me. Here we are in Puerto Rico. Oh, teeth. Welcome to the Dumas Brothel. Now we're going to be investigating the Montana State Prison. People have reported seeing dark, shadowy figures coming at them. There it is again. I haven't seen these outside of the museum. Lot. This was made in 1784. He was your protector. <laughs> it is creepy out here. Look at that. What the? Oh my God. Don't touch it. That's not Chris. Trying to... Are you okay, dude? Amy, I'm locked in here. Get your dad. All right, hold on. Hey! My name is John Zappas. For over 40 years, I've been helping people with their paranormal problems. I found that spirits can attach themselves to objects and make life a living hell. That's where my team comes in. My son, Chris. My daughter, Amy. Brian, my tech guy. Jason, my researcher, and Jesslyn, my investigator. My job? What is that? Don't touch that thing. Find the haunted item and remove it. Because I am the haunted collector. All right, I want you guys to see this submission that came in. This woman's pretty scared. Hi, John. My name is Mary Lou. I live in Montgomery, New York. Uh, I own a horse farm. Over the last two years, I've had five uh, horse deaths as well as uh, seven or eight other major injuries. I find that the nature of the illnesses and the injuries is beyond normal. I've seen an apparition, which I believe to be the previous owner in the barn, so I feel like she's trying to take these animals away from me and harm them and myself. John, I really need you and your team to come out. I'm worried about my safety and my animal safety, and I don't know what to do. I'm very desperate. Well, I definitely think that we need to get down there to see if we can help her out. All right, sounds good. Let me get the team together. Okay. Welcome to Montgomery, New York. We're heading out to Mary Lou's farm. Mary Lou has a suspicion that the activity in the house is somehow connected to the previous owner. Energy could be very territorial. If this person was so much wrapped into the farm, that could trigger some type of activity. So we need to dig in, guys, and see what we can find out. I want to know what is killing Mary Lou's animals. Amy and I are going to head in to go meet with Mary Lou. Why don't you guys get the equipment ready? Jason and Jessalyn, why don't you check around and see what you can find out? Hi, Mary Lou. Hi. John Zappas. Very nice to meet you. This is my daughter, Amy. Hi. Hi, Amy. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Thank you guys for coming. Please come inside. Okay. Mary Lou, fill us in on uh, what's going on. Well, I got the farm about four years ago, mm -hmm. and the previous owner was an older woman. Her name was Yvonne, and um, she lost the farm just because of, due to bad health, and she had passed away. Some odd things started happening around here. It just seems to be a lot of negative activity. I don't know if it's attributed to her death or not. She left a lot of belongings up in the attic. When you have items left behind by a person that has died, is it a good possibility that their spirit could still be attached to them? Yes. Their energy could still be lingering here. Previous owner used to call me after she moved, and she'd say that um, this was her farm, that I shouldn't be here. She made it clear she wasn't happy about it up until the time that she died. It seems that it really stirred up a lot of things around here, and I just don't know what's going on. This was her bedroom. On occasion, I've seen a figure, you know, a person, through the window. But coming in the house, there's nobody in that room. And my friend David has also seen apparitions in the house. Tell me a little bit about your experience. I'm driving up to the house, and it looked like someone was walking through the hallway. It was a dark figure. It almost looked like someone was walking backwards down the hallway. I did not see a face. I could not see any characteristics about it. So I quickly parked my car and run in the house and I could not find anyone in the house. That was just completely unexplainable. I did find in the bathroom drawer a piece of jewelry that she had left behind. This is it. Mary Lou, what prompted you to hold on to this? I didn't feel comfortable throwing it out. I mean, it, it's something I'm sure was important to her. 
what's actually happening here on the barn. A large level of activity goes on uh, here. I've had a, numerous freak accidents with the horses. They did belong to the previous owner. She unfortunately had to leave them behind. And I've had five horses in, in particular die. They all seem to coincide with when Yvonne had passed away. I almost feel like she's trying to take them from me. This is the billiards room. I came in here one evening and turned on the lights and I heard buzzing and looked up and in the skylight, half the window was covered with bees. And no sooner did I turn the light on and realize that there was bees that they fell on the ground and died right in front of me. Have you had the land and the water and anything checked out to make sure there isn't something happening here? Well, as a matter of fact, I actually right. called the state and had the state come out uh -huh. and check and nobody found anything wrong. One thing I'm really curious about, why have you chose to stay here? When you have this many horses, it's hard to just pick up and leave. If I didn't have them, we'd already be gone. After meeting Mary Lou, I'm a little concerned. There's a lot going on. So while the rest of the team is out investigating the barn, I'm bringing her into our first night's investigation. When you have that high-charged emotion, you can usually get information, and it can help to give me answers. <sighs> Mary Lou, what I'm thinking is if there's a strong connection between Yvonne and you, I figure uh, one of the most closest things to Yvonne would be a piece of jewelry, and that was left behind. Would you be willing to put it on? Yes. I'm probably going to ask you to throw out a few questions, too, and what we're doing is we've got a couple of the meters there to see if we get any readings. I'm going to go ahead and turn the REM pod on now, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. Ask her if she's happy with you being here. Yvonne, are you happy with me being here? Yvonne, do you want to hurt me? Do you know why the horses are getting sick? We'll do our EVP session. Jess, I want you to kind of go down that hallway. Chris, I want you stationed right here. All right. I'm going to stay here by the cow. We'll see maybe something locational will give us a clue as to what is going on in here. Can you tell us your name? Is there anyone in here with us? Can you tell us why you're here? What can we do to stop the animals from dying? I have to take a listen to this. Can you tell us your name? Is there anyone in here with us? Can you tell us why you're here? What's that? Sounds like interference. Listening back to the recording, I heard something that I can only describe as a disturbance. It sounded like something was trying to come through. You know what? I want to get this on the computer as soon as I can to see if something will pop up. Do you want me to leave the farm? Is there something you're trying to communicate to Mary Lou? that? Did you hear that too? I heard it. Uh, Yvonne, what are you trying to get across? The heck is that? You're communicating by tapping, aren't you? Are you trying to take the animals from me? Is that you trying to tell us something? Yvonne? Are you the person that's been hurting the horses? Do you know who's hurting the horses? <laughs> what else is going on? It's okay. It's all right. Yvonne, are you trying to get something across to everybody to so that... Oh, my goodness. It was outside. You two stay here. Okay. Jake and Lee.
see anybody out here. Oh my god. You're kidding me. It's a bird, dude. <laughs> Looks like it's dead, but it's still a little bit warm. Alright. A couple things out there I'm a little concerned with, but I think right at this point in time, I think it's gonna be best if you bail out of here. Right, thank All you. Right. Okay. And we're talking about a lot of different animals mysteriously dying, and here we find a dead bird. Do I really think that this is something paranormal? I'm not quite sure at this point in time. But I made a decision not to tell Mary Lou why I didn't want to upset her more than she already was. Mary Lou has had a lot of strange things happening with her animals on the farm. So I've been able to locate a Dr. James Zagoda, animal doctor. He's got over three decades of experience. So I'm really hoping he's going to be able to give us some answers on what exactly is happening at the farm with these animals. It could be toxins, pollution, things that happen in the environment and the air that can cause sudden mass deaths. Mm -hmm. But you, know, you think of something that can affect them all at once. It could be electromagnetic fields. Sudden shocks could certainly do that. Throw off disturbances in their heart rhythm. We know that some animals, like birds and insects, are sensitive to electromagnetic fields. They use them in their migration, and perhaps disturbances in that can affect them. So what types of things would cause a fluctuation in the uh, electromagnetic field that would cause this? Well, commonly on farms, there's something that's called stray voltage, where there's some kind of electrical short in either the electrical supply to the building, a short in a wire. If this current's going through the ground, we have these incidents with the horses. Is this something that's going to affect them? Oh, absolutely. Especially horses, if they're shod, if you think about it. It. They have steel shoes and nails in their feet, obviously a good conductor for electricity. And if it's strong enough, there are instances of animals actually collapsing and dying. It seems like we may have a case of something called stray voltage here. This can cause electrical problems where light bulbs will blow. And most importantly, this can wreak havoc on the animals because the voltage actually travels through their body. We probably encountered some of that stray voltage ourselves. While we were in the middle of an EVP session, we got something that at first sounded like interference. I was able to clean it up. Now, I know it's a little hard to hear, but with the headphones... Can you tell us why you're here? Okay, it sounds like it's saying don't hurt them. <laughs> A lot of these different things are lining up. I think we're very close to figuring some of this out now. If this is Yvonne reaching out to Mary Lou, could this be a threat? Or could it be a cry for help? Or is it a warning? And if there is stray voltage here on the property, is there a connection? I'm hoping we'll find out tonight. Amy, Jess, and Jason will be investigating the barn. Chris will be on the monitors. And Brian and I will check out the living room. You guys want to split up and just get some readings? Sounds good. We know now that these EMF fields and these electrical currents can literally wreak havoc for the animals on the farm. So I wanted to see if we can actually capture any of this EMF present in the area. Keep an eye out for any loose wiring, too. The electrical outlet seems to be disconnected. Where are you? It's so weird. I just had a spike of almost nine. Now it's gone completely. I did spike from a zero to a nine, and then I couldn't find it anymore. So I'm yeah. wondering if something electrical is just kind of surging. Fast and ready. Okay. The Opolis is on. Since we got several noises in response to the EVP questions last night, we figured we'd try our luck tonight with the Opolis. The Ovilus measures the energy in the room and converts it into words using a dictionary built into the device. In theory, spirits can use that dictionary to communicate with us. If there's anybody in here, please feel free to communicate with us. Step. What step? Tell me what you're trying to tell me. That double lock over there. Yeah. Light. Light. Can you say anything else to us? Attic. 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 Again. I think we know where we gotta go. Okay. Okay.
Sawyer's room. That's where she saw the bees. All of them just dropped to the floor dead. Nothing. Anything so far? Absolutely nothing. We are on a farm, and there are a number of cats here, so most likely I'm going to chalk that up to just a cat. That scared the out of me. The obelisk was spitting out lots of words, and we kept getting repeats of words. Attic. Attic. I really feel like this was direct communication. Whoever wanted us up in the attic, all you have to do is just come and touch this, and we'll know that uh, you're here and we're going in the right direction. Spike too. Something in here. Looks like it's broken pieces or something. What the hell is it? Whatever it is, this is going off. It's broken glass. Wait a minute. Put your flash. What is that there? I have no idea on this one, buddy. I need to find out exactly what the heck this was. I'm meeting with Nancy Michaels. She's been dealing with antiques for 50 years. I'm hoping that she's going to be able to share some information on this item. This kind of identifies it to me. Okay. That it's a Leyden jar. It's a conductor of electricity. Okay. It's like the early battery. Oh, okay. So it would be a jar covered with metal, filled with water, mm -hmm. and they would hook these electrodes. This would sit in it, connected to a generator, uh -huh. and then it would charge this up. The electricity came through here and out here. Okay. So, it's shocking. I'm just trying to figure out why uh, something like this would have been on this uh, farm. Well, I'm really not sure of that, except that they did use these on animals to practice, and it could kill them. So they basically would just put that right up to an animal to demonstrate yes. and cause the animal to die. Yep. Now that I know what this object is, I think I have an idea what's been happening here on Mary Lou's farm. But it's not what she thinks. Mary Lou, during the course of the investigation, we had a lot of paranormal activity that took place. Do I feel that Yvonne is here on the property? Something I cannot rule out. But do I feel it's what you were thinking it was? No. But I'd like to play you one EVP where it really started connecting everything last night when we were in here investigating. Okay. Can you tell us why you're here? I don't know if you're quite hearing it. There's a female voice in there saying, don't hurt them. Hear I can now. hear it. I know. I don't think it was to scare you. Mm. I think it was to warn you. We were checking with different equipment, and that's when we actually headed up into the attic, and I discovered this item. What we had found out was that this was an earlier form of an electrical battery. And to actually prove whether they worked or not, it was used on animals. How that item actually ended up there, we're probably never going to know that. But we found out something that's very important, and I think you need to check into it, is that with barns, the wires could get broken, and the electricity is actually traveling through the ground, and it can come off and the animals are making contact, so that could be making them sick. Okay. And I feel Yvonne, she was a strong influence with trying to tell you that the animals were getting hurt down there. Do I feel that she was the one killing them? No. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense it to me. It makes a lot of sense because I've had several electricians come out and they had a lot of difficulty because everything is wired just very oddly. If they were disturbing electrical lines, and then we end up finding this device that, you know, was created to bring 
energy through it, and it represents a threat to animals. So this could have been Yvonne's way of pointing out the danger. It makes complete sense to me now. What would you like to do with this item? Please take it. Okay. I do feel you need to move forward. All right. Yvonne, her job's done. She needs to cross over now. I have to hug it. You got it. You got it. We'll probably never know for certain if it was Yvonne reaching out to Mary Lou, but whatever the presence was, it was a protective spirit, not a threatening one. And by heeding its warning, Mary Lou and her animals can hopefully live in peace and safety on the farm. Hi, John. My name is Debra. I bought the Echo Club about three and a half years ago. It's a Polish club that was built in 1885. We've been experiencing a haunting here, and it's beginning to get worse. A lot of our guests feel so uncomfortable. They feel like they've been pushed, choked, thrown down the stairwell. All my money has been thrown into this building. Please help me. I need to get to the bottom of this. meet with Debbie, Chris, Brian, get the equipment lined up. Just check around, see what you can find out. Okay? Sounds good. Hi, Deb. Hi. Hi. John Zaffis. Hi, John. This is my daughter, Amy. Hi. Hi, Amy. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the Echo. Come on. I bought the Echo about three years ago. It was built in 1892, and it became a Polish club, and that went on for over 100 years. This building uh, has never been open to the public until this year, and I made it a banquet facility. So you did a lot of work. It was uh, a lot of work, but I had no idea what I was getting into. I can assure you this place is truly haunted. Something grabbed the corner of this candy dish and started slamming it on the table. You really feel uncomfortable up here, don't you? I do. Do you know where he died? He died suddenly there in the basement. No way. I can assure you this place is truly haunted. In this guest bedroom, I had this horrifying experience. All of a sudden, the room went completely pitch dark, and I went to hit the light, and there was no light. And when I went to grab the door, there was no door. It had now became a wall. Later, the lights came on. I was trembling. I don't know what happened. I shake when I think about it. It's so scary. Can you find anything logical, like a short and the electric? I know for sure I had the lights checked by an electrician. It couldn't have been the lights. And it just feels like I could get locked in here again. You really feel uncomfortable up here, don't you? I do. I get goosebumps right now just thinking about it. All through this building, other people have paranormal experiences as well. In this room right here, we were showing it off to the public. There was a woman I was with. She was visibly shaken. She explained to me that just a few minutes before, something was trying to get her attention. There was a candy tray on the buffet table, and as I was talking to her, something grabbed the corner of this candy dish and started slamming it on the table. This dish right here. I've tried to reproduce it, but the closest that I could ever get is if something actually grabbed the end. That went on for 10 seconds. That's alarming. It seemed like it was an eternity. When we first bought this place, down the hall, I found one old picture underneath the stairwell. I want to show you this. And the date's clearly marked on it. I don't know where the picture came from, but after I found that, the craziest night happened. Lights wouldn't work. Noises, knocking, doorbells were ringing. I don't even have any doorbells. Voices and banging on the pipes. It was very eerie. We know in a lot of different cultures and belief systems, they're very guarded when it comes to photographs. They believe it could trap their spirit. Now Debbie found this underneath the staircase. Then she has this experience right afterwards. I want to see if we can actually find out more about that photograph. I don't even know who these people are. 
Right. right now in the basement of the Echo, mm -hmm. and I'm horrified to be down here by myself, and I've had some terrible experiences. See this light bulb? I put my hand over it to turn it off in the night, and another hand went right over me. And it was so terrifying and creepy, it just scared the daylights out of me. I could physically feel another hand on my hand. I want to tell you about this safe, Alexander. Selaski owned the bank across the street. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, one of his safes in the Echo, but I don't know anything about it. Can something like this hold on to energy? It's a good possibility. It's metal. It can really hold on to vibrations from the past. Rumor has it that we have a jail down here in the basement. There's a jail down here? I'm not certain, but if that is an actual jail, you can imagine what went on. Why would somebody put a jail in the basement? Could this be causing some of the activity? I'm hoping we can find that out. What I'd like to do right now is I want to get the team in here. I want to get the equipment set up. Let's see what we can find out for you. Oh, great. Thank okay. you. There's a lot of things to cover in this place. So Brian and Chris are going to be in the upstairs, and Jess and I are going to check deeper into the basement. It's creepy down here. It's not comforting. No, it's just, it, it's a weird, it's weird. But it looks like it's meant to keep people in. Yes, it does. I would not want to be locked in here. So let's try a few EVPs in here. Here goes. Were you once trapped here? Did you once live here? Play back, let's see. Are you getting colder? Definitely getting colder in here. The temperature's dropping. We have it? evidence of it getting colder. This is where they found that picture, right? That's in there? Yeah, it was actually underneath the stairs that they found. Did you get that? Yeah, where would that come from? Just spiked. Oh, there it goes again. Catching something? Seems to be it. It's frustrating. We do have a steady point, too, but, I mean, sounds like background radiation. There's not much going on in this room. This is frustrating. I keep getting a hit, but I don't know if it means we're supposed to come out here in the hallway. Can you get that open? Wasn't that open? We got in there. What the hell? Why is this locked? We didn't close the door, and we certainly didn't lock it. If the closing of the door is paranormal in nature, it's very important that we get to the bottom of it. We gotta get in there. Go check that room. I'm gonna check that room. If I can't find a key, let's find something to maybe push that right. uh, bolt back with. Where the hell would you find a key? Anything you did? No. Well, nothing in my room either. All right, I've got the uh, toolkit downstairs in the case. Uh, let's go get it. All right. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What? Look. Would you hide a key? Anything you did? No. Well, nothing in my room either. All right, I've got the uh, toolkit downstairs in the case. Uh, let's go get it. All right. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What? Look. Seriously? I guess we don't need that key. I think we'd have to get your dad's thoughts on this one. Hey. Hey, Johnny. What happened? We were able to check out this crawl space. Um, everything seemed fine. We got a couple of hits, nothing big. But when we came back, this room was locked, and neither one of us had done it. We split up to see if we could find a key or some other way to get inside, but when we yeah. came back, the door was ajar. And neither of us had touched it. Neither one of you did anything to it. It was huh? solidly locked. That's where they found that picture. Mm. I think I'm going to have Jason and Amy see what else they can find out about that photograph. I was able to do a little work on the picture you sent me. Using photos that I found in the library, I was able to cross-reference them, and I was able to positively ID this gentleman right here as Alexander Zaleski. Zaleski, that's the name on the safe that was in the basement. Debbie said when they found the picture, the activity in the house just went crazy. Okay, I was able to contact a historian, but he asked us to meet him in a cemetery, so we'll see what happens. 
So who exactly was Alexander Zaleski? His grave, it's right over there. He was a Polish immigrant who came here late in the 19th century and was very industrious. He had a dream of having his own bank and he ended up having that bank in 1920. He loaned money to other immigrants who came over. Well, after building the bank, he decided to build another building across the street. The Echo Club? Yes. What we wanted to ask you about was there's actually a number of jail cells down in the base. Well, in those days, times were tough. And if you owed money to Mr. Zaleski, I imagine he had to find some way to put pressure on you to pay up. I would say that some people must have been locked up for a while, but I can't prove that for sure. I wasn't able to figure out exactly how he died or where. Do you have any information on that? He died suddenly, more than likely from a heart attack. Do you know where he died? He died there in the basement. Debbie actually tying in with all this. There's some type of a connection here that I'm missing, and I'm kind of hoping tonight during our investigation we can start to line some of these things up. Jason will be watching the monitors on the second floor. Amy, Chris, and I will investigate the third floor hallway and bedrooms, and Jess and Brian will cover the basement. Session number one, down here in the Echo Club basements, suspected jail. Can you tell us your name? It's been reported that the people who were locked in this room were kept down here because they couldn't pay what they owed you. Is that true? anything we heard. Hold up. There's this bottle right here. Hey, Jason, come in. Hey, buddy, I'm here. We heard something skittering across the floor. And now there's a bottle on the floor in front of the safe. Did you see it? I didn't see anything, but I can go back. We're coming up. What's up? All right, man. Okay, after I click it, it's going to be about five seconds. Yeah, okay, so it is underneath mm -hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay, it's underneath there. I didn't notice. No way. We, yeah. Holy crap. It's, it's like so catch. forcibly pushed. And it rolls back. I'm not going to say it's supernatural just yet, but a full bottle of alcohol moved on its own, and I can't find a good reason for it. I'm not getting any readings. There's a room right back here. I'd like to go in there and let's check that out a little bit. Oh, this room's got a weird feel to it. I wonder what this room is used for. I don't know. It's all right, it's all right. Chris, to see what it is. Chris, to see what it is. Debbie found it underneath the stairs. You're kidding me. It fell on the floor. What? There is no way that picture could have logically fell on the floor. It was in the middle of the bed. I'm gonna rip that right off. I'm trying not to, but I see something underneath there. What is that? I don't know. It's a page with a whole bunch of names. Look at that. Wow. I can't quite make out what they are. But it's names and it's dollar amounts, and there's check marks. Put that back on here for a second, buddy. Amy, hold that wire up a little bit. <gasps> Looks like writing. There is writing. 
grass cozy something or another. I don't know. I can't quite make out what that is. Got some weird things going on here, guys. We definitely got to find out about some of this. Seeing some of the writing on the photograph, I'm convinced that this is Polish. I'm going to get together today with a guy named Eddie. He's a historian on the Polish culture. I'm hoping he can clarify some of this writing so that it can connect more of this with the Echo Club. One of the things that was found in the back of the uh, photograph was this piece of paper, but I'm kind of hoping you might be able to interpret some of the information that's on it. It definitely looks like some kind of a ledger. Payment was made for something. Okay. Um, these names owed these figures, and then they were just checked off as they paid them off. Substantial amounts, though, if, if this indicates dollars. And there's 20, 50, uh, 70. That's a tremendous amount of money for that time it frame. Is. We discovered some information on the back of the actual photograph, and I'm hoping you're able to interpret some of that for us. Uh, let's see. Das, Kozhash, Mesh. The literal translation is beyond the death. So this probably means that these gentlemen gathered here will live beyond death. After getting together with Eddie, he clarified that this is indeed a ledger indicating who had paid their debts and who didn't. There's one name on this ledger I can't wait to show Debbie. Well, Debbie, I have to tell you, there's definitely quite a bit of activity that did take place in here. Wow, my heart's racing right now. We decided to look into the photograph that you said you had found under the stairs. One of the men in the center was actually Alexander Zaleski. Oh, wow. And he actually lent money to people out of the bank and also to a lot of the immigrants that were here in town. And uh, we were able to find out that he lived here in the house and also that he died in the house. Oh, my God, I didn't know that. Yeah, he actually died of a heart attack, and I have his death certificate. Wow. I'd like to show you some of the evidence that Brian and Jess experienced down here in the basement when they were investigating. Okay. Okay. And I want you to watch down over in this area here. Oh, my God. Now, is this paranormal? I'm not quite sure. Chris, Amy, and I were up on the third floor. As we were in that front area, we heard a big crash. And Chris went darting down the hallway, and he found that photograph on the floor. And I think we really did find the significance to why the haunting is taking place. We had found a piece of this ledger that was stuck in here. What? And it was right over in the area where the paper wasn't all broken. I'm hoping you can see some of the names that are on here. Take a look and read some of them down and see if you could recognize anything. Seriani. Dominic Seriani? It's my last name. Right. I'm in shock. I can't believe my name's on here. It's mind-boggling. I think you'll find interesting too, Deb, is that column here marked paid. The Seriani box isn't marked. Correct. My God, my heart's racing. I see the paid side, and I see that we didn't pay our debt. And when I saw that name, I don't think words could ever say what I felt. It was just unbelievable. The whole thing was unbelievable. Never knew that they had an outstanding debt, and it was a big debt. But the one thing I do feel is going to help with some of this. Let's give Alexander Zaleski the recognition that he is looking for by you placing the photograph and that little ledger here in the safe. What better way can you honor him? That's what I want to do. Okay. Yeah. With its long history and mysterious past, the Echo Club may always be haunted, but by acknowledging the legacy of Alexander Seleski and the debt owed by Dominic Siriani, I'm hoping Debbie will no longer be threatened by the negative activity that has been tormenting her and her staff.